Morning guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I got this HP 17.3 inch laptop. It's fairly new, probably only about four or five months old. Uh, gonna do a simple, quick little upgrade on it. It's got the 11th Gen Core i5 1135G7 processor in it. Uh, it's got a 17.3 inch full HD display, backlit keyboard, all the usual stuff. Um, it's got, a, I believe it's only got 12 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM in it. So they got an eight and a four in here. So what I'm gonna do is, it's got a one terabyte mechanical hard drive in it. Why they put a hard drive in this would be on me. But anyway, it's got a hard drive. So I'm gonna put in a one terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD drive here and do a clean install of Windows 11. And I'm also gonna jump up the, jump up the RAM from the 12 gigs. I'm gonna put in a 32 gig kit of DDR4, 3200 megahertz memory from Crucial, good RAM. Uh, the drive is an SP, Silicon Power Gen 3 SSD. You could put a Gen 4 in here if you wanted to. It would still work, just won't run at the Gen 4 speeds, basically. So the exact model of this laptop is 17-CN0053CL. So without further ado, I'm just gonna pop right into it here. Not sure what the layout's going to be in here. It's been a while since I've been in a 17-inch model, but I think they're just like the 15-inch model, just a lot of extra empty room in there. So, um, in the well, in the back here, we're going to remove this rubber foot across the back, and in the front here, I think we just got to peel up the corners here of, of the one in the front to get out, you know, the screws, and then you got some more screws here. So, let me get rid of this one in the back here. It's going to be a quick little upgrade, guys. If you peel these off, just try not to stretch it too much. Or when you peel it off. Just like I'm doing there. They do kind of stretch a little bit, but we have to get it all the way off because there's a bunch of screws under here. I use a real super thin, clear, double-sided type tape. Put these on. But... No matter what you do, they stretch a little bit, but it's extremely sticky. So there's usually plenty of sticky left just to put it back on there. So you can see we got four screws along the back. And then in the front here, I'm gonna get the corner up here. I'm just using a really sharp little tool here. Get these screws out. Jeez, old piece, Dale. Got the shakes this morning for some reason. Too much coffee, it's early. Push that back down. You see it already stretched out a little bit. Anyway, worry about that later, no big deal. These aren't too hard to get into. Get that corner up there. I'm using a number zero Phillips magnetic tip screwdriver. It works real well. Pull these screws up and out. You want to make sure you put the black screws back in, you know, where you took them out of, so to speak. They're all the same length, so you don't have to worry about that. Two more in the front here. Two more right here in the front. I believe there's. I don't think there's anything under the center of this strip here. <clears throat> All right. So now that we got all the screws out here guys we're going to open it up from the top here i'm going to use my trusty uh, it's early bear with me my little triangle spudger tool here i'm going to start on a seam along here just get it wedged in there with plastic it's not going to scratch anything just got to kind of be careful you can hear it popping loose They are tight. And then the 
bottom pan is going to pull off once we get it separated. Stuff fell out of the keyboard. <laughs> Customer hasn't hardly even used this laptop for whatever reason, but he just he didn't have anything on the hard drive, no data that he gave two hoots about, so that's why we're just going to do a clean install and be done with it. Get all, get all the Windows updates. Throw Chrome on it for them. There. And it'll be like a brand new computer, but a lot faster because we're going to have the SSD in there. So I'm going to carefully close it. Flip it over. Now we've got to kind of jiggle this thing off here, if possible. Don't be just yanking on it too hard. But usually, without too much trouble, you can get in the back here. Our little spudger tool here. These are a little tricky along the back. It wants to come, but still got to be careful. Ah, it's big. Oh, there it goes. So now we can just carefully lift it off just like that. Set that out of the, out of the way. And yeah, here's our mechanical hard drive. Now, first of all, if you're not sure of yourself, you can take the battery out. There's just one, two, three, four screws, and you can pop the battery right out, but I'm just gonna be super careful. Um, and we even got a mounting screw for the SSD right here. Here's the SSD slot right here. Here's our two sticks of RAM. They are, yeah, it's gonna be eight, eight and a four, it looks like. Um, you see it's very clean but what I'm going to do is he doesn't want this hard drive back in there so I'm just going to remove the hard drive leave it right out of the computer um, with the cable and everything I'll give it back to the customer of course and you could always leave that in there if you wanted to once you put in the M.2 SSD or you could just put a two and a half inch SATA SSD in here as well uh, either way but in this case he just wants to get rid of it so maybe save a little power on the battery not having that drive sitting there spinning so let's go ahead and get that out of there. Just gonna pop up the little clip right here. Release the cable, just like that. And it should pop right up out of here. Pretty simple, just like that. So like I said, we're gonna leave that out. Can always put a drive back in there at some point in the future if you wanted to. Um, so, Let's go ahead and carefully, like I said, I'm leaving the battery in. I'm just gonna be really careful. Pop out these sticks of RAM. That's an eight gig stick. And that is a four gig stick. So they had 12 gigs. I don't know why they didn't just put two eights in it. It would've cost them another five, 10 bucks, but whatever, that's what they do. So I'm gonna put in two 16 gig sticks, a DDR4-3200 from Crucial. like that get a good click be careful turn a little bit here he said if you're leaving your battery disconnected just don't drop any screws or tools on your main board there that wouldn't be any fun just be super careful over here we don't really have much to worry about take out the little mounting screw here pop in Mr. M.2 right into the slot. Just make sure it goes in all the way. Oop, which it did. And I'm gonna put the screw back in. I'm gonna try to put the screw back in. Ah, geez, Dale. Why is that not lining up? in all the way apparently all right bear with me oh there we go I didn't have it locked in there all the way now it's in yeah 
And as I, as I always say, don't touch anything in there. You don't have to, guys. So there, we got our one terabyte, brand new SSD, NVMe drive, two new sticks of DDR4, and we're gonna do a clean install. So I'm just gonna go ahead, for now, I'm just gonna put the cover back on here. I'm not gonna completely button it up until I'm sure everything's gonna be good but I am gonna snap it back in place, but mostly here. Just don't squeeze, squeeze real hard on your lid here, guys. You don't wanna break your screen on the other side there because it can happen if you push too hard. Carefully open this back up. Those are good clicks you wanna hear. All that stuff came out of the keyboard. It looks better. So I'm going to take Mr. Power Cord here. I'm not sure the battery's charged up all the way. Pretty straightforward upgrade, as you can see. Just got to be careful. And we're going to put Windows 11 22H2 on here. I'm not going to bore you with the whole install. I got tons of videos on doing that, but I got my bootable flash drive here. You can make these with the Windows Media Creation Tool, of course. You can download that for free from Microsoft. Um, so we got that, we got that. I give all that back to the customer. So let's go ahead. It should default to the flash drive. Let's turn it on and see. Make sure it reads our RAM okay. Being the i5 11th gen, I don't think the, pretty sure the 32 gigs of RAM won't be a problem. Oh, we gotta do, it's not defaulting to that drive, it should. Let's try, shoot, I can't see those keys. All right, get F9 here. I think it's F9 or F10. Let's try the other port. It's not seeing my drive. I don't like these keyboards. <clears throat> There's our hard drive. Or there's our S or USB boot drive showing up right there though. Let's see if we can boot off that. You shouldn't have to go into the BIOS and change anything. I'm, I'm doing an upgrade like this, guys. Secure boots already enabled UV BIOS and all that good stuff. So we're gonna let that boot up off the drive there, hopefully. As you can see, it, it is booting. And I gotta plug in a mouse. It's very common. But I gotta get a mouse in here because there's no driver loaded for it yet. All right, so in my case here, I'm just gonna choose the default United States, English, all that fun stuff. Quick install now. Like I said, I'm not gonna bore you with the whole install, but this is just a straight up Windows 11 install. Pretty simple. <coughs> Gonna have to load the VMD driver so it'll see the drive. We'll hit next, install now. It's not detecting the drive, but we're gonna click on load driver. I'm gonna go to browse. I got the driver right on the Windows boot drive, um, flash drive, so I'm just gonna double click that. It's right there, hit okay. There's our VMD or RST driver, hit next. Just gonna load that driver real quick and then it should see our drive. There's our one terabyte SSD. So I'm just gonna hit next and let the install go. So yeah, pretty straightforward upgrade. We got 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM now, one terabyte NVMe SSD versus you know 12 gigs of DDR4 and a clunky one terabyte hard drive that HP put in there. They probably got a ton of these laying around they're just trying to get rid of. Plus they can sell a laptop probably just a hair cheaper that way. But anyway, that's all I'm gonna show you today. I
appreciate you watching. Have a great day.